So what you see right now is a very simple little subprogram called nested loops that essentially says, all right, create a variable called numrows, has five rows. And for each of those rows, go through and display what row number we're on. So it starts at zero and it's going to keep going all the way to the end. So if we run this program right now, we should see zero through four. In theory, if it runs. There we go. So we see row zeros are one, two, and three, and four. Very simple. Now, similar to if statements, we can actually use nesting on loops, but it can be quite a bit more complicated to wrap your head around. So let's say, for example, we wanted to also keep track of columns. So what if we were looking at a similar system as this, a spreadsheet? So we have row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we have columns, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so forth. So why would this ever be useful? Well, th picture yourself storing data like this. Maybe you had a video game that's set up where a character was at row three and column row three, column C. It might be a game like Tetris or something like that where you're trying to keep track of every individual uh, piece. Um, so there's, there's a lot of uses for something like this. So how do we actually utilize this? Well, let's create another variable called int num columns. I'm just going to call it calls and we're going to set this to three we'll keep it very simple now what we're going to do is we're going to use nesting so in here we're going to say for um, int j equals zero j is less than num columns j plus plus column and then we're just going to open and close those brackets effectively sorry as we should and Okay, now before I get in too far, I want to explain a few shortcuts that I've done, just so you can see them. First of all, you can see that I never created my counter variable separately. I don't have an int i here anywhere. I just have it built right into the for statement. This is one shortcut we can make. We can actually create the counter variable inside here. Now, this is useful only if you plan on only using the counter variable within that for loop. If you need to use that counter variable elsewhere within the rest of your subprogram, then this is not the way to do it. Um, secondly, you'll notice that the name I chose, I and J, those don't seem like they're very descriptive names, and they're not. However, in the world of programming, I and J and K are very, are very short and consistent names that are commonly used with for loops. And it's just because once you see, once you get into more programming, you're going to realize that the for statement is one of the most used statements, and a lot of times the counter variable is not necessarily. Um, the most important aspect of it so we can simplify it to very simple variable names so in this case I just called it I and J I could have very easily called it row and column if I wanted to so inside of here I could copy this statement oops and we're just gonna modify this to display the column using J this time because J represents the column now watch what happens when we run the program it's pretty darn messy. So we're going to clean this up just a little bit. So rather than showing off all this stuff as two separate lines, we're going to simplify it and we're going to add the column data in the same statement. So instead of this, let's put down coordinates and then we're going to have an opening and closing bracket. And we're just going to separate them by a comma. Now we can get rid of this line. Oops, we'll just comment this out for just one second, actually. Now if we run our program, we can see it's a little bit cleaner. And what you can see here is that the first number always represents the row. So what it does is it says, OK, for each row, go through each column. So if we look at the code, what we're actually seeing here, let me just scroll this down a little bit, keep the code up there so you can see this. What it's saying is for each iteration of the outer loop, go through the full iteration cycles of the inner loop. Since num column is three, it's going to go through three iterations of this inner loop before it goes before it finishes one iteration of the outer loop so the inside is completely finished before the outside finishes its first iteration so that's why we see that the row is still zero 
for each one of the columns. And then it repeat then it resets the row to one, and then it goes through all three columns again, then two, then all three columns again, so on and so forth. So essentially, if we look at our Excel sheet, it's saying, look at this one, then this one, then this one. Now this one, this one, and this one. Now this one, this one, and this one. We can see it. So it's going over the complete row column by column. That is what we call a nested loop.